Hello YouTube, today another discussion video. You know, one of the videos where I just put away all scripts and only have some talking points and try to, well, talk a little bit about a certain subject. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the Great War and well, re-examine it a bit because I've talked about the Great War in great detail across many, many videos and I kind of want to bring those points together and I also mentioned some videos you should watch so you have like the complete story on the Great War and, and also I want in this video I also want uh, to have something from an elven perspective because why would they make certain demands or why do they uh, why did they even attack or uh, so yeah with that behind me let's just right get into the discussion So, the Great War, or a uh, formally stated the armed conflict between the Third Old Mary Dominion and the Mede Empire, or in essence still the Third Empire when looked at cultural aspects. I'm going to stop there with the formal language. <laughs> well, I've, one of the things I'm always, I've always wondered when talking about the Great War is, well, why did the Old Mary Dominion attack in the first place? Because in my in all my videos i always uh, have i always talk about well the empire did did and the empire did that uh, in the war and this and this happened in the war but i never talk about why the dominion even attacked and some of you might already know the things i'm going to say but i think that it should be stated uh, nonetheless so in our own history Wars have always been about either revenge, self-preservation of a state, or just some business transaction between great lords. And well, I personally think that the Talmor, the biggest part was probably revenge. I am 99% true that it's probably about revenge and just about having a general enemy for the Talmor public, so the Talmor uh, for the Alt Mary Dominion public, so the Thalmor, the ruling faction of the Alt Mary Dominion, could get, could stay in power because we know nearly nothing about the Thalmor. But what we do know is that, well, they had to eradicate like all their uh, opponents, and basically right now it's sort of Nazi Germany. If you in in the Thalmor Dominion, if you speak out, <laughs> Thalmor Dominion in the Alt Mary Dominion, if you speak out against the, the Thalmor, well, you just get deported out of the country or just well killed <laughs> plainly said but one of the main things how they probably justified the war against their own population and why their population uh, participated in it in the form of soldiers of course was probably because of the revenge aspect they probably just fired up everyone against the empire in the uh, like more than 100 years that they've been in power right now and well, one of the main reasons why the Talmor and the uh, and the El High Elves in general would want revenge is, well, plainly said, Tiber Septim. <laughs> because Tiber Septim, uh, he he conquered uh, the all, all of Tamriel at the beginning of the third era and the end of the second era. And at one point, well, the High Elves were like, well, fine, he can conquer Tamriel. We're here being High Elves on um, the Somerset Isles, but. Uh, Tiber Septim received the Numidium, so like a giant brass golem uh, from uh, the tribunal in Morrowind. And with that brass golem, you can hear more about that in my Dwemer video, I talk about it in some length. He just, well, he captured all of the Somerset Isles. I'm not going to go into much detail with this because I have another video planned on Tiber Septim. I have so much to do. And there, I, <laughs> and there, and there I'll tell you the story in great, in great detail. However, Tiber Septim, he caused massive destruction. A lot, of, uh, he caused a lot of elvish uh, lives, and well, something we mostly fail to understand while playing the Elder Scrolls is that, of course, they, they are fictive uh, the characters. But if they were real, some of the elves have lived for hundreds of years. I mean, it's not uh, they're not immortal, but they can live for hundreds of years, and. Some of the elves that are alive right now, so in the fourth era and during the time of Skyrim and also during the time of the Great War, they have seen Tiber Septim's destruction. I mean, there are not many left probably, but there are some who have seen his destruction. 
and there are also maybe some who lost a parent or an uncle or even a brother or sister in the war because of Tyberceptin. And after that they've been under years and years of human rule, almost 800 years if I'm not wrong. Or 700, I'm not, I haven't got it in my notes. And well, <laughs> that human rule wasn't always that great. I mean, uh, me and Avarti are right now making a video on the Ty on, on the Septim Dynasty where we cover every emperor and, and, and his policies, etc. Et it will be a two-part and it will release probably later this month or next month, depending on how busy we both are. But in that video, you will see that the rule of the Septims hasn't always been that great. I mean, we, we mostly think about when we think about the rule of the Septims about Oblivion and Uriel Septim the Seventh and how great everything was around Tamriel. But you will see that at one point, the, em the two emperors before Uriel the Septim, uh, Uriel Septim the Seventh, I believe, particularly the one before him, I'm not sure I. And in my old script, in, in my uh, script, they they cast for a lot of unity within Tamriel. And before that, uh, well, things weren't that great under the Septims. And while there were a lot of great emperors uh, in the Septim dynasty, there were also some, uh, well, not that great. And I mean, certainly as elves, when you live for such a long time, I can imagine that being very frustrating to live under some, well, borderline unfit humans to rule so well at one point the elves probably just accepted the fact that they lived uh, under the septim dynasty's rule probably point number one why they would accept it being that the me the yeah, not the meat the septims were dragonborn so they could uh, that there were actually there was actually benefit in having them as emperor because they could light the dragon fires etc and also well, at one point, elves just um, they adjusted themselves to the situation, and so there were also a lot of imperial loyalists and things. Well, on the whole, not not everything was really great or something, but I mean it was livable under the Septims. Then the Oblivion Crisis came, and well, we all know what happened. <laughs> I mean. Somerset Isles got completely um, overrun by the Daedra and the Empire didn't really do that much to, uh, to stop them and well when the Oblivion Crisis ended, long, long story short you have to see it in my video on the Thalmor when I the Thalmor examined, it, uh, all I, I tried to put all the videos in the eye icon however the Thalmor claimed that they stopped the Oblivion Crisis and that's actually what got them their popularity in the first place and how they got um, into, into their positions of power and well, after that, when you don't have the empire, because most people believed it in the Somerset Isles, they, they don't really see uh, Martin Septim as their uh, savior or anything, maybe as a small factor, but I mean, they see the, the, the Thalmor as their saviors. This made them completely resent the empire, I think, because I mean, you've been living under, uh, under human rule, but that human rule was useful for you. Then, well, everything goes to, well, crap, I suppose, with the Oblivion Crisis. And then the Thalmor, your own kind, has to save you from that. And what happened after death is that, well, when the whole Stormcrown Interregnum was done, the Mead Emperors came, Titus Mead II, and they actually tried to claim the Somerset Isles under their rule. Well, <laughs> I mean, you don't like that. When first you were promised, well, sure, I'm living under human rule and, uh, well, I'm paying taxes, but I'm at least being safe from oblivion because of dragon, uh, dragonborn rulers and then some non-dragonborn warlord after everything has gone to shit and your own kind has had to save you because the empire wasn't there for you. He comes like, hey, um, I'm the new emperor and you're gonna listen to me. And well, of course, you're not gonna want that. <laughs> I mean, the Thalmor were already a very extremist faction within the Somerset Isles and they, how to say that, they kind of hitched up the whole population against the Empire in their reign, I personally think. It's mostly speculation what I, uh, what I say, because that's usually what happens before such a, uh, such a war on such a great, great scale as we, see, uh, as we saw. I mean, 
There, there are a lot of parallels between Nazi Germany and uh, and the Thalmor. And just and there too, the people were like hitched up against their enemies, the Soviets and the Americans. So I personally think that something similar probably happened in the Somerset Isles. And actually, the Thalmor themselves, I don't, I, I don't know if they, if the if the population of the Somerset Isles knows of this, but the Thalmor actually wanted to kill all the humans, all the Imperials, or at least, and, and, and so probably enslave the survivors in Cyrodiil. Because in Elder Scrolls Legends we learn, uh, we learn that they use the or, uh, some, uh, also all sorts of Daedric magic, but also they wanted to kill all the people in the Imperial city, so they could, as a sort of offer, and then they would have the pro uh, a prophecy would be activated called the culling which would completely flood Cyrodiil with Daedra and kill every last Imperial or at least most of them <laughs> and then probably have the law uh, have the few that remained enslaved um, by the Thalmor so yeah not all the elves think that way but I think that most of the elves were at least hitched up to not see that as a problem and also Remember that while this is something that the Thalmor wanted, again, not all elves wanted that. I mean, most elves don't really hate the humans or anything. I mean, every, almost every high elf sees the humans as less because, well, it, it's, it's just true. I mean, the humans live only in a very short lifespan and their skills are usually, certainly in magic, one of the most important things in high elf culture. They, they are just less than the high elves. So... They, of course, don't want to be ruled by humans, but they don't hate humans. Just like, I mean, very stupid example, of course. But, uh, for examples, for example, that, a, well, we see a sel ourselves superior to, for example, chimpanzees, but we don't hate them. We just don't want them to rule us. <laughs> very, very stupid metaphor, but you get the point. And as last thing, last thing I want to say about that is that the Great War, I mean, not all the Elves could have been in favor of it, certainly not the Imperial Loyalists, but remember that when the Great War started, the Thalmor weren't, were already in power for about a hundred years, maybe longer. Uh, well, even longer, I mean. And all their opposition had already been systematically removed from the Somerset Isles. So the population that was there, and that was actually able to participate in the war, was already most, more or less in favor of the Thalmor, and probably had already a lot of anti-imperial sympathies because of well, the propaganda of the Thalmor, and just the general attitude of the Thalmor against the Empire. So, yeah. And then I wanted to discuss something else than just the elven perspective on war. I wanted to talk about the demands because when the before the Great War sparked, uh, the, 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 the Thalmor sent like this ambassador to the Imperial City, who uh, came to Titus Meet II and gave him a list of demands. Otherwise, there would be war. That list of demands was, of course, Talos worship being banished, which with, which is well kind of understandable after what we just heard about Type Septim and the uh, still living elves who have seen his destruction. They also wanted money, a large sums of money from the Empire. They wanted disbandment of the blades and they wanted uh, a large section of Hammerfell. There were also some other minor things but we don't know them because it just states that it was a long list of demands but these were the most prominent demands. Well, I wanted to start with the Talos worship of course because that's one of the most obvious. I mean, <laughs> there are still people alive within uh, the Somerset Isles who have seen his destruction of High Elf lives and well I personally speculate that some of the Thalmor might have even been among those that were still alive uh, back then because the Thalmor have always been like of an extremist faction within the Somerset Isles and I probably think that the most extremist High Elves were probably the ones who saw the destruction of Tiber Septim so I think that the, the Thalmor like the inner party is mostly composed of those who saw Time Receptum's destruction, which makes, well, the outlaw of Talos worship completely understandable from their viewpoint, of course. And then there was the money. One of their demands was, as I said, large sums of money from the Empire. 
I personally think that this was just bullying, like just bully the, the empire in their faces that they're weak and they can't do anything against it because at the time the empire was in a much, much worse state than now, I mean when with now speaking about Skyrim, because in Skyrim we see an empire that has largely rebuilt itself and while they struggle in Skyrim because they have to work with locally recruited uh, farm boys, there are a lot of troops right now in Cyrodiil, I mean Cyrodiil I mean, everybody accepts Beyond Skyrim as sort of the new canon, but while it could be canon, uh, the most things we see is that Cyrodiil isn't all that bad right at the moment, because Titus Mead II has really since, since the war, I mean, it's been 30 years, he's been rebuilding, and there are a lot of troops right now on the border of Cyrodiil, and if there's one thing he rebuilt, it's, it's the military, because he doesn't want another destruction like the Great War was. Well, I just think that that money, to get back to uh, the subject, because I'm already talking for way too long, was just, well, plain out bullying. Then there was the disbandment of the blades. The only real thing that was a threat to the Old Mary Dominion from the Empire. I mean, the blades were the, one, the, the ones that were actively working against the Old Mary Dominion. I probably think in some, with some help of Penetus Oculatus, but I'm not sure. Because the Penetus Oculatus already existed before the dismantlement of the blades, but it was smaller. It was like the personal unit of the Emperor, because the blades were no longer directly in command of the, uh, of the Emperor. They worked somewhat with the Empire still, but they were more of an independent organization, because there was no longer a dragon, uh, Dragonborn Emperor. Because right now, probably the Penetus Oculatus is the biggest threat to the Old Mary Dominion, since they are... Probably more skilled than the blades, but I mean it's Thalmor's own fault. But yeah, I can't really blame them because they were thinking they would completely destroy the Empire. So there wouldn't be any organization like the blades ever again. But that's not really relevant right now. So the disbandment of the blades is kind of understandable. However, large sections of Hammerfell. Why did they want that? Because... I doubt it was just because of bullying, because you don't want a piece of land under your command uh, <laughs> just to bully someone. I mean, to bully someone you either ask him for money or you just burn his farm or you just send him elephant shit or something. I don't know. But you, you don't want land unless you uh, specifically uh, have a purpose for it. So I probably think they would ask for huge bane because it's easily defendable and it has a good strategic position. And probably also for some land uh, near the southern coast of Hammerfell, between like Teneth and Riyadh, to probably enclose the empire between two parts of their land. So in, um, part of the empire would just be stuck between Valenwood and Hammerfell. And of course the emperor wouldn't accept this because it will put him in a very terrible situation. That said, I think that is why they would put it, but I I was trying, when I asked myself these questions, why, I was trying to understand why they thought that the Emperor would actually accept, because they thought he would accept, uh, they, they knew that the Empire was weak, and the Empire was weak at the time, I mean, <laughs> it was in no, uh, in no shape to fight, however, then I was thinking again, because with the new information we have from Elder Scrolls Legends that they were actually using the Orb of Vermina to scry where the Imperial Legion was at and what their tactics were, they could see their every move. I mean, whatever the, the Empire did, if they wanted to do something, the Thalbor were, were, were just waiting for them there. So, I think that they just had these demands after they found the Orb of Vermina and were like, hey, we can use this to put lever, uh, pressure on the Empire. And then probably someone said, well, we shouldn't say that we have this, instead we should, we should just attack them for fun or something. But, I mean, they knew that they would win. They had the, the Orb of Vermina and they knew they would win with this. I mean, the Empire is just as strong as the Almeri Dominion, even in their weak state, if not stronger. But they had the Orb of Vermina, so they were sure that they would win. I mean, the Red Ring, War the the final that was the final battle of the uh, Great War, where the Almeri Dominion army was completely destroyed, but the Emp Empire's army as well. I mean, there was still the full Almeri army. They hadn't really had too much casualties because of the Orb of Vermina. However, the small Imperial legions that were there 
completely destroyed them when they no longer had the Orb of Amina. I mean, they did not account for the Forgotten Hero destroying, uh, uh, defeating Lord Nairfin and, uh, and removing the Orb of Vermina from him. I mean, the only reason they did it was because they knew they could. That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, I'm not really that good with English. And, well... That was something that I was always wondering. What was the motivation between the, the whole Great War? And I personally think that while revenge played a part, I think that this was the most important part because they of course wanted revenge, but they I don't think that if they didn't have the Vorpa Vermina that they would have tried. Because they know how strong the Empire is and how good at strategy the Empire is. And right now they just knew that they could. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a little bit stupid to say, but I think that it's something important that you you should understand while looking at the Great War. Because if they hadn't had the Orb of Femina, they wouldn't have attacked the Empire. That's personally what I think, and I think that it's reasonable to say that. Anyway, it's completely up to you. I'm sorry that I've kept you for so long now. <laughs> I mean, it's must, it must have been... Um, quite annoying to listen to me for such a long time so I'm going to leave you with this if you liked the video um, I mean it was just a discussion it wasn't really anything of an information video or anything but if you liked it like subscribe I mean I have a lot of normal lore videos on my channel which is just me reading a script and with all kind of background uh, images I mean you can watch that of course and also if you liked it, like, subscribe. My Instagram and Discord are in the comments if you want personal contact with me. And if you want to support me in a proper, more personal way, I always appreciate it. And you can visit my Patreon. People on my Patreon will get, well, sometimes some discarded scripts. But I have really run out of them at the moment. So there isn't really much at the Patreon right now other than a special rank on my Discord and your name at the end of my video. So, with that said, I will see you in the next video.